What Your Ribbon Skirt Means to Me Deb Holland's Historic Inauguration Written by Alexis Bunton and illustrated by Nicole Needhart. When the school bell rings at the end of the day, Pia runs out the back door, past the vegetable garden and across the basketball court to the Native American Center. Hersha Tuhe, good afternoon Pia. Auntie Autumn greets her. More kids from across the city arrive on foot, by carpool and by bus. Usually kids at the center do homework, eat snacks, and play outside until a grown-up can take them home, but today is special. Gather round, kids. It's about to start, Auntie Autumn calls. She clicks on the TV. Does anyone know who that is? It's Auntie Deb, says Ashley. My grandma told me she has a very important government job. Auntie Autumn explains. That's right. Congresswoman Deb Holland works to make sure we can all go to good schools, live in safe homes, and take care of Mother Earth. And right now, Auntie Deb is at the White House for a swearing-in ceremony with Vice President Kamala Harris. Pia wonders, what happens at the White House? Does Auntie Deb look after kids like me? Pia has so many questions, but she knows one thing for sure, the meaning of ceremony. Auntie Deb's wearing a ribbon skirt, Pia notices right away. What's a ribbon skirt? The new girl, Jasmine, asks. Before Pia can respond, Auntie Autumn makes a special announcement. Guess what? This evening we are throwing a party to celebrate. Will we make medicine bundles again? Is the intertribal drum group visiting? Pia wonders. She tries to wait patiently by teaching Jasmine a powwow dance, but nothing can distract her from the anticipation. Grandparents, mothers, fathers, aunties, uncles, and cousins begin to arrive with a parade of beef stew, fry bread, dried buffalo, smoked salmon, corn on the cob, Hawaiian rolls, macaroni, and jello salad. Pia waves hello to mom and grandma, First, everyone gathers in a circle. Grandma prays to the Creator in her language. Auntie Autumn lights a bundle of sage and walks it around the room. Even the smallest baby gets a smudge. It's time to bring good things to you, Auntie says, as Pia gently waves the smoke from her head to her toes. Next, Auntie Autumn announces, Auntie Deb represents all of us. So we are going to craft regalia to honor her. Grandma carefully arranges a rainbow of shiny ribbons, describing each one. Red is for strawberries. Orange is for fire. Yellow is for sun. Green is for grass. Blue is for water. And violet is for shells. Pia marvels at the beautiful cotton fabrics for the skirts. One is orange as a poppy, covered in shining white stars. Another is the color of dried sweet grass, textured with even lighter green dewdrops. And Pia's favorite is as purple and sparkly as the throat of a hummingbird, speckled with tiny yellow flowers. Pia eagerly runs her fingers through the rainbow, but everyone must be served their meal before the sewing begins. Grandma is served first because she is the eldest. The food smells so good, it's hard for Pia to wait. When it's finally her turn, Pia heaps her plate with smoked salmon, acorn brownies, and macaroni. Mom shoots Pia a stern look, encouraging her to add a spoonful of Rore salad. At last, Auntie Autumn proclaims, it's time to make our very own ribbon skirts. Pia already owns a ribbon skirt Mom made that she wears to powwows. It has applique flowers for Mom's Anishinaabe culture. She also wears a Gualafon necklace to honor dad's Chamorro culture. Can any of you tell me why it was so special for Auntie Deb to wear her regalia at the White House today? Auntie Autumn asks the kids. Native pride, Imani shouts. Healing, Ashley chimes in. Ancestors, says Pia. 
Three excellent answers, Auntie affirms. The grown-ups arrange two different stations, one to make ribbon skirts and another to make ribbon shirts. Pia is excited to design an original creation. She picks the purple fabric, then she measures, snips, and rips. Snip and rip, snip and rip. With grandma's help, Pia carefully sews the drawstring, the waistband, the skirt panels, and the hem. She adds the finishing touches, red, yellow, and blue ribbons. Ribbon skirts are like armor, Pia says. That's right, Grandma replies. You don't need a ribbon skirt to be powerful, but when you wear your regalia, you shine with all the strength of our mothers and grandmothers since time immemorial. So Auntie Deb wore her skirt for my ancestors? asked Pia. Yes, and for all the mothers, aunties, daughters, and grandmothers yet to be born, native and non-native. Wow, Pia considers this for a moment. Grandma, she asks, I want Jasmine to feel welcome when she comes back. Can I gift her my skirt? Yes, Pia, she replies in a loving smile. Today, we have so much to be proud of. On March 18th, 2021, indigenous communities across Turtle Island celebrated when Laguna Pueblo citizen Deb Holland was sworn in as the first Native American cabinet secretary of the Department of the Interior. In this role, Secretary Holland supervises a group of U.S. government agencies, including the National Park Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Land Management, and the Bureau of Indian Affairs to manage over 500 million acres of federal lands, most of which are adjacent to tribal reservations. Prior to this appointment, Secretary Holland made history as one of the first two Native American women elected to Congress in the 2018 midterm elections, along with Representative Sharice Davids, Ho-Chunk, and the first female Vice President, Kamala Harris, these women of color showed girls across the America that they can overcome any obstacle to make the world better, no matter who they are or where they come from. Deb's achievements are especially significant considering that Native Americans were not guaranteed the right to vote in all states until 1962, when she was two years old. Raised in a military family, Deb moved frequently as a child. She graduated from high school in Albuquerque and put herself through college at the University of New Mexico. Just four days after obtaining her bachelor's degree, Deb gave birth to her daughter, Soma. Despite struggling as a single mother living paycheck to paycheck, Deb earned a Juris Doctorate from the University of New Mexico School of Law. Prior to her career in public service, she served as a tribal administrator and businesswoman. Deb's unwavering commitment to environmental justice, the climate crisis, Missing and murdered indigenous women and family-friendly policies offer hope for countless Americans. The History and Meaning of Ribbon Skirts Ribbon skirts are an intertribal tradition across Turtle Island. When a woman wears a ribbon skirt, she proclaims her strength, sacredness, and survival through the generations. Ribbon skirts honor indigenous womanhood and draw attention to important issues affecting native peoples particularly the missing and murdered indigenous women crisis. Although they are considered ceremonial, ribbon skirts can be worn every day. Written sources suggest that the first peoples of Turtle Island initially obtained European ribbons in the 18th century as diplomatic gifts or through trade. Native peoples have since adapted new materials and techniques to existing designs, displaying ongoing ingenuity and creativity, a hallmark of North American textile work. Today, ribbon skirts are known for their distinctive solid or pattern based fabric layered with horizontal ribbons, usually satin, and applique design motifs. Colors and designs are carefully chosen to convey different meanings and intentions. Ribbon skirts can have different meanings for different people. Originating from traditional Eastern woodland, Midwest, and Plains regalia, Ribbon skirts fall below the knee in an A-line. For some tribes, the length and shape mirror the Mikiwak, Cree, or Tipi, Dakota, 
reminding the wearer to carry forward teachings shared around the teepee or home fire to future generations. Ribbon skirts evoke the interconnectedness of all life, symbolized by the circular shape of the base. Cycles of nature connect us all. A common saying across Turtle Island is, all my relations. Our relations include plants and animals, as well as humans. This saying recognizes the earth as the original mother of all life. As the bottom of the skirt touches Mother Earth, she acknowledges who is walking upon her. The shape, design, and significance of ribbon skirts all speak to our responsibility toward our relatives on Earth. The decisions we make today will impact many generations to come. Take action to protect your world. Write a letter to our government. Address your letter to Secretary of the Interior, Department of the Interior, 1849 C Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. 20240. Things you might include your name, age, and where you live. Thank you for your service. Something you hope the Secretary can do to help the environment. One thing you do now to help the environment. One thing you hope to do to help the environment when you grow up. For more ways to protect the future of our planet, consider picking up trash, recycling, composting plant and food scraps, feeding birds in the winter, walking or biking instead of driving, growing your own food, planting flowers for pollinators like bees and butterflies, encouraging the adults in your life to vote, avoiding the use of balloons, learning from elders, 